Carr and Wanda Tyner. And Wanda Tyner. And also, Patty, thank you very much as well. Now, there's a little housekeeping in our workshop today. We would like everyone to please stay muted. If you have any questions or issues, please use your chat feature. You'll find the chat button at the bottom of your taskbar on your screen. And make sure to get your paper and ready for notes. And at the end of our workshop, we will have a way to open up the floor for little questions and answers. Our guest speaker for the online workshop will be Catherine Alexander. Catherine, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you. <laughs> it's, I have to start by saying it's, it's really fun to see all these names and faces. I'm, I'm honored. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of art fairs and I've, I've seen your names and I've seen your work and it's just, it's a joy for me to, um, to be here with you today. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm truly honored. Um, and I am, I am grateful for the success that I've had with TikTok. I am by no means the only voice <laughs> that um, has found this to work out. So I am, I am not the expert or the only expert or the only one you should listen to, but I am thrilled to share my perspective um, with the app, which has worked really well for me. So a quick introduction of myself. If Allison, did you want to say anything else or I can just go? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> so uh, my medium is pisanki eggs. I am an eggshell artist. So I've, um, I've learned this craft from my mother when I was a young girl. It's just a folk art tradition. So I'm not a, a formal studied, well-versed artist. I'm just someone who happens to love this craft. And one of my goals um, for the past five years since I've gotten really into this art form is to elevate it from from a craft from a hobby to something that can be seen and appreciated in the fine art world and so that's that is my goal um, I want I want people to walk into art galleries and art fairs and say oh that's that's Pisanki eggs whether it's mine or someone else's and have an appreciation and an understanding of the art TikTok has been a great way for me to introduce this art to a very very broad audience um, and I I'm, I'm thrilled with what I've done so far with the app. So um, to get us started, I'm just curious if you can give me a, a show on your hand, uh, your comfort level with TikTok thus far. Like one is you're not even sure if it's spelled with a K or a C or if it's two words or one. And five is you've already started posting videos. You are, you're making content, you're, you have, you're in it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So good. We've got a good range. We had like the zero. <laughs> like, I don't even, why am I here with a TikTok? <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, I think all of us approach it from the exact same level of zero when we, when we first download the app. And one of the things I'll tell you is if you're not ready to get it on your phone and have an account and feel like you're in it yet, you can go to just www.tiktok and explore around on there. And you are more than welcome if you're if you're viewing on the computer right now to open up another screen. You don't need to be making eye contact with me. You can explore. Um, that's totally fine. I won't be offended. Um, so just open up TikTok, mute it so it, you can still hear me. <laughs> um, and then just kind of look around. You don't need an account to just start scrolling through there. Okay. And it's, um, it's just an easy introduction. Okay. I also want to say, yes, I'm happy to answer questions at the end. I anticipate, I would love to answer a lot of questions and hang out with you. Um, artists are my favorite people. So, um, but please use the chat box and type in your questions there so that I can see them early. Uh, if I can work them in early, I'm happy to do that. And if not, I might cover it later. 
next. Who knows? Okay, so let's start at the very beginning with um, with my story on TikTok. So I just started my business again. So I was enjoying this art for a long time. When my youngest son was born, I got into Pasanki much more diligently, much more frantically at night. Um, you know how as artists, sometimes we just, we get into those like compelling um, times where you have to be creative. Um, that was right after my son was born. And it was a response to being isolated in motherhood and wanting to do something. Um, so that was about five years ago. And the artwork started leaving my nest. People wanted it. It was great. I realized I was going to have to start, you know, properly selling it and taking taxes and doing it legally, <laughs> which I didn't anticipate um, having that need. So I formed my business at the end of 2019. And in 2020, the very start of 2020, I said, okay, great. I'm going to start doing art fairs. I can do this. I can collect tax. This is going to be so great. So I started applying to art fairs in 2020 in January and February, and I was getting my letters and I was so excited <laughs> to finally get out there. And you all know how that story goes. So TikTok for me was a really great way for me to still work on my mission of making this art understood. I had been using Instagram for years. And I think one of the biggest differences is with Instagram, you're showing a lot of photos and people have, people have used that in very dynamic ways. I always just posted the end result photos. It looked clean on my page. I liked it. It was tidy. I could photograph the work nicely. That was working for me. With TikTok, you have to, you're, you're making videos. It's a video platform. So it forced me into showing a lot more of the process. And I think that is where the audience really finally started to care. And that's what worked out for me. Now we'll talk more about that when we get down into um, in considerations for artists, because there's, there's good and bad things about that. So that's how I got started in TikTok. Um, I had a couple of videos hit the millions and that was thrilling and exciting. I think now I'm, I'm close to 300,000 followers. They're all over the world. I wouldn't believe it if I wasn't actually shipping all around the world. Um, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, and it really, for me, it, it changed the, the shape of my pandemic. Um, that I could still be creative and still feel like I was sharing that because it was important to me. So that's me. Here are the basics of the platform. The demographics are, it's, it's I'm sorry, 57% female. Um, so it's, the ladies are well represented. <laughs> um, and also you're gonna hear this all the time. It's a very young, demographic platform. Okay. It's a lot of kids on there. So 32% is under the age of 19. Now that's good. And that's terrifying. <laughs> so 32% is under um, 19. Another 30% is only between age 20 and 29. So nearly half, well, more than half is under the age of 30. And so that looks and feels a lot different than what we see at art fairs, right? Um, but I think that's an opportunity for us. I think that's a great way to get people into art and um, yeah, into art. <laughs> so uh, it is international. The United States has the most viewers right now. India is very, um, very active. But it's it's all over Brazil, Mexico, all of Europe. Um, it's when I do live videos. One of my favorite things to do is um, ask people where they're from, and all their flags start popping up, and it's it's truly incredible to see how international this platform is. So I would encourage you to just start by scrolling around on TikTok when you want to. They, um, don't don't feel 
like what you need to do is open an account and start posting videos. Just have fun with it. And unfortunately, you're going to have more fun than you want to. And you will, you will get, you will lose time. Like we all do. You will find your own rabbit holes. Right. Um, and it's, it's fun. Just stay there for a while, hang out, enjoy it for a bit. Don't feel a rush to make any videos. So there are two ways that you can get familiar with the platform. One is called the FYP and that's the for you page. And the other is a set of um, following. So you'll see FYP and you'll see following. And uh, oh, that's a good question, Allison. I'll, I will get to that one. Um, so FYP, the for you page is where TikTok starts to kind of figure you out. And they say, this girl's into eggs. Let's see if she likes chickens, right? <laughs> and so every once in a while, a, a chicken video will pop up. And if I watch it to the end, I'm going to get more chicken videos. Okay. Uh, and it's not anything that I'm actively doing, but it's figuring me out quite accurately, terrifyingly accurately. Um, also like, is she into hair dye? Oh, she is. Well, maybe she wants some more of these. How does she feel about lipstick? Not into it. Okay. So we'll <laughs> like, it, it learns you quite nicely. Um, and your politics and, and lots of things. And it will start to show you more and more of what you like. The longer you spend watching a video, the more you might get of that genre. If she's into chickens, does she like cows? Nope, not interested in cows. We move on. <laughs> so um, that's your FYP. And it is, it is where you will lose hours of productivity. Sorry. <laughs> and then um, once you start watching videos, if you want more from a certain person, you just click their profile and then you start following them. So from there, you can go over to your following page and that's everybody that you've already decided you want to start following. And it's just a video feed of what they have put out recently or in the past, your, the, the creators that you are following. So those are your two, pro your two main TikTok sources. So what's allowed and what is not allowed on TikTok? Basically, it started off with anything that was under a minute of video time. So you had 60 seconds. If you go over that, you're cut off. Too bad. Um, since then, it has expanded. Now there are three-minute videos. There are five-minute videos. I think they're even working on 10-minute videos if they're not already there. For the most part, people usually keep it to a minute. In fact, minutes start to feel very long um, and, and you can lose your audience by doing full minutes because that's not their attention span anymore. <laughs> um, but what's not allowed is uh, also pretty important because you can get kicked off the platform. You can have your videos blocked. So what's not allowed is bullying, drug use, alcohol, nudity, and sexual conduct. Can't do that. Um, I do think that nudity is important to note when talking to a group of artists, right? You should just be aware of that going in. If you are, if you study figures, be careful with that. Okay, so on your page setup, there's very basic information, your profile name and um, a, a small bubble. I think it's 80 characters that you have to introduce yourself. And that's all you get from the beginning. Okay. Now there are, there are um, features you can earn to add on to your profile. You don't get to see all of them um, if you are scrolling online without an account name. Okay. So for example, um, at, at a certain point, I don't know how many followers I had to have, I was able to add a link to my website. In the beginning, um, when you're brand new, you don't get to have a link, which is completely unfair. But I think this is one of those things that TikTok is very smart about. Like they make you earn features, right? And I'm, I could roll my eyes about that, but I'll, I'll try to be positive. <laughs> They're smart. It's a, it's a smart platform for keeping people on it. Um, so uh, there's a link to my profile. Then also, um, creators can have playlists. 
So I have an entire playlist that is dedicated to just ostrich eggs that I have done. I have a playlist that is a four part series of, of how to start making pisanki. Okay. So even if you, if you don't have a playlist feature at the beginning, any videos that you have put out in the past, once you get the playlist feature, you can add into it. So if you want to do a, a series on something with the idea that later on you can put it in a playlist, go for it. Um, also, there are pinned videos that people can put right at the top of their page that they want people to see first. And uh, creators, once they get to a certain level, can start accepting gifts. So gifts are people can pay TikTok $5 from the PayPal account, and then they get an icon of sunglasses, like a picture of sunglasses or an emoji, and then they can gift it to a creator. And if they pay TikTok 50 cents, and then they give a creator some sunglasses, that creator gets like 20 cents. It's a little silly. Um, I'm not gonna get rich on gifts on TikTok. That's not a goal for me. <laughs> um, in fact, I've, I've started to really discourage people from spending money that way at all. I just, okay. <laughs> also in your own profile, um, there are there's a way to save drafts. So you can start playing around with creating videos and never ever post them. Um, so don't be afraid to like film your cat sleeping and then see like what effects you want to add to that. And you can save it to your drafts. You can play around with adding music to it and you're never posting it. You're never intending to post it. You're just learning. Um, that also creating videos is best on your phone rather than your computer if you're looking at it that way. Okay, those are the basics of TikTok. Um, I hope that makes sense so far. So I'm going to see if we have any questions. Oh yeah. Do the videos need to be in vertical format? Good question, Adam. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think the answer is they really do have to be in vertical format. Um, and it's, it's most of the editing is done in the app. I don't know of many people who use iMovie to edit and then upload it. Um, so yeah, one of my big issues is that if somebody wants to use their TikTok videos on YouTube, it's, it's not very compatible. It's, it's frustrating. Um, and maybe someone else in the room knows more about that than I do. Um, can you upload from a computer? I know you can upload from your phone. I don't know about the computer. Um, and we're gonna talk about Allison's questions. Do I advertise for live videos? I'm gonna to get to that. Okay, great questions. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna have answers for all of them. <laughs> I will try my best. <laughs> okay, um, also, is my audio good? Can you, it like, we're cool? Okay, great. So tips for growth. Let's say you're, you're ready to get started posting some videos. Um, and again, that might not be anybody's, everybody's goal. You might just want to use this to network um, or enjoy without ever posting a video. And that's fine. That's great. Um, if you want to start posting your videos, um, think again about your profile name when you set up your account. How do you want to be recognized on the app and will that translate to the real world, right? If I'm standing in my art fair booth, I want people to look at the sign there and say, Catherine Alexander, I know you from TikTok, right? Um, I want that to be very clear. Some people would rather have more um, of an anonymous presence online um, and not have a real world connection. All, all good, fine things. I think for us, this is more of a professional group. I think we'd like to connect those dots. Um, so think about your name and how you want to do that. Think about your profile picture. Um, it, it could be your actual picture. It could just be your logo. Um, it could be a piece of your art that you always, you know, have um, that you really like to, to display. Now, the importance of being genuine from the very, very beginning. So if you've been playing around on TikTok, you've been watching some videos, you're noticing things that people are doing and they are um, 
gaining followers. And it, if it doesn't resonate with you as something that would be natural for you to do, please don't try to emulate it. Um, I think the best advice I ever got was to just be yourself um, as genuinely as you can be. If you're silly, be silly. If you're quiet, be quiet. Um, because that is the only way you are going to really be able to consistently speak to your audience in a way that doesn't feel emotionally exhausting. Um, and we'll talk about burnout as well. <laughs> um, so just be you. And then the people who are going to like you the way you are and the way your artwork is, they're going to find you and they're going to stick with you. Um, and that might be broad and it might be very narrow, um, but it's rewarding both ways. So interactions off your page, off of your page are another really great way to start making connections and kind of building some followers. So maybe you have a video or two that you've posted. Maybe you just start by, by showing your artwork. Um, that's fine and simple and just a kind of a good first here I am video. Um, and then you can start commenting more on other people's videos. And that can be a really great way for them to say, oh, I wonder who said that. And then they'll click on your name and they'll see who you are. Um, and maybe your profile says, uh, you know, St. Louis painter, and that's enough to get somebody a little more interested to click on your video. Um, so the comments that you can leave, keeping in mind that most of the creators are very young, um, we can use our professional voice in a very significant way. If you can say something positive to these kids that demonstrates you have a knowledge and an understanding of your craft, that will catch their attention. Um, they are eager to be validated. We all are. Um, and if there's someone out there who knows what they're saying and they can say it concisely and kindly, that, that's meaningful. Um, and, you know, maybe you get a follower, but maybe you just gave them a smile that day. And that's, that's pretty great too. Okay. Because there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of negativity out there too, right? So, <laughs> so um, interactions off your page can bring people to your page. Also, um, closed captions on your videos are a great way to, um, to kind of keep people watching. So once, um, once you do a voiceover on a video, and again, play around with your cat, right? Take a video of your cat, and then take a voiceover that says, here's Quinn, she's sleeping again, what a lazy bum. And then, <laughs> and then um, you can ask for TikTok to add the closed captions and then you can edit what they heard and uh, you know, correct the diction and the capitalization and all those good things. So what closed captions do for your page is first and foremost, the hearing impaired can now enjoy your content. But also a lot of this scrolling that we do on TikTok is, you know, when your husband is sleeping next to you in bed and you don't want to wake him up or, and I'm so guilty of this, like I'm watching TV and I'm watching TikTok videos at the same time. It's terrible, but I can only handle like, you know, the volume of one. So if I can read one and listen to the other, I know. I have, I have a problem already, <laughs> but the captions really do help for those who are not um, in a place to hear something as well. You know, they're at a restaurant, they've ordered, now they're waiting. Um, I would encourage you to play around with captions. They're frustrating. Everything is frustrating at first on the app. So, you know, play around with those drafts for a solid month before you really think about I'm gonna post something. <laughs> um, hashtags and trends, those are fun. Um, but I will say I've never capital, capitalized on a trend um, because I'm just not good at catching them. And also my art is slow. So <laughs> like I did a Wordle Pasanki, that was fun. Um, sometimes there's things that I can plan ahead for like May the 4th. I can do a Yoda Pisanki, but I have to start that in April, right? <laughs> um, so if you want to, if you want to start playing around with that, try it out. 
personally, I do find that if I start to make my art in a way that I'm trying to capture a trend and it doesn't work out and it usually doesn't, now I'm frustrated that I've spent my art time on TikTok. And so, you know, learn from my mistake and back to that being genuine and being authentic, you know, make the art that you want to make and then have filming TikTok be the very last part of what you're thinking about while you're making that art, you know, kind of forget that the camera's there and then you can edit it later if you want to. Um, that's just, that's just my advice. You do you. Um, so hashtags and trends can be very fun. Um, you will see a lot of lip syncing and I have done a couple of those and they're just, they're silly things that, um, sometimes I enjoy, sometimes I don't. So since most of the videos are 60 seconds, there's kind of a debate in the TikTok world. Should everything be only 60 seconds and it's a standalone video and no more, or can you have parts of videos and a series of videos? Um, and there, there are teams <laughs> on this. It is a divided topic <laughs> where sometimes, um, you know, you'll like I do usually three parts, but I'm very consistent with them. So the first part is writing on an egg. The second part is adding the colors to the egg. And third part is, is a part of my process called the reveal. Um, so I do three parts. However, I post all of them at the same time. So I'm working in my drafts all week. I'm editing when they're all done and they're complete and the work is already on my website to buy. Then I'll post all three videos. So I think this eliminates people being frustrated with me where they'll say, well, like I got to part one and now there's no part two and I'm left hanging. They don't like that. That's fair. I wouldn't like it either. Um, so even though I post three parts, posting them at the same time kind of eliminates the fights on my, on my page. <laughs> there's, still, there's still some angry people, um, but we'll get to that later too. Okay, so you can kind of decide if you want to play around with that. I'm just, my, my word of caution is that if you post parts, know that some people will automatically not like it. And then they will vocally say, don't watch this video. There's another part and it's not posted yet. Okay. Titles. If you go over to my TikTok page, um, that might be helpful to look through at this part, um, flipping screens. So Catherine Alexander Art. Catherine, um, would you like me to share your TikTok page? Because I could do that. Uh, sure. Yeah. Just we can do that. Do um, yeah, briefly. Um, but yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, Wanda. Um, so I like to add a title to all of my videos. Uh, so that people can kind of catch up where they left off because things will jump out on the for you page. Wow, that's a lot of me. Oh, um, <laughs> people can um, get any single one of these videos in any certain order on their for you page. So you can see even when I'm posting parts, I try to have them look consistent so that if someone watches a video and then they come over to my page, they can say, well, she was wearing a pink sweater. So where is that? Okay. And you can also see the titles. So I have this theme going, which is Pisanka of the week. And then I will very clearly label them part one, part two, part three. Um, Wanda, if you want to scroll down, why don't we show, there's one specific one where I did it. Okay. That's uh, keep going a little bit more. Whew, so much of me. Perfect. Okay. If you go up just a little bit, thank you for doing this. Stop right there. Okay. Um, the one where I'm in a green shirt. Yes. Why don't we watch that one? And then I think that can kind of help show a few examples at the same time. Thanks. Oh, I don't think we have audio. Okay. Well, I'll talk over it. So you can see sometimes I'll film. Oh, maybe you can click. Sometimes I film myself creating the art. Um, sometimes it is just my hands and what I am doing. Um, I like to get different perspectives on the process. But I think, I think there are two things that are captivating on this platform. I think one is facial expressions. And 
some of us are going to be more comfortable with that than others, but I do think it's, it's one of those things that we as humans identify with. Um, there are a lot of accounts that are just people being expressive. Thank you for showing that. That's perfect. A lot of accounts that are just people like lip syncing funny lines and being expressive. And I think something that this platform has tapped into is that human need to connect with someone's face. Um, so my profile has a lot of my face, but if you watch the videos, it's mostly my hands. Um, yeah, yeah, so there you go. So you can see also like my name, uh, the, the short bio that I put in there and a link to my website. This is great. And then you can also see that the for you um, option and the following option and then all kinds of good things. Perfect, thank you. We can get out of that, that's too much me. <laughs> okay, so titles do help organize your um, profile page. I would encourage you to try those out. Also, I always use the titles that don't have like a background sticker. Um, there's a few different options you can play around with. Um, if I'm doing something out of my normal Pasankia of the week theme, then I'll make my title look different so it stands out. Okay, cluster filming is a great idea for us as artists, um, and especially as someone who like, I don't want to get dressed up every day. I don't. Um, I do want to get dressed up on days that I'm filming for TikTok because I that's how I like to present myself professionally, okay? Most of the time I'm at the park with my kiddos playing soccer and I'm not ready for filming. So on the days that I film, I do what's called cluster filming where I'll get ready, I'll get myself the way I want to be. And then I can, I can show different parts of the process very much out of sequence and then edit all of the artwork I do later on. So I'll make a pasanki. Sometimes I'll do that, that filming process that involves <laughs> my face. Um, and then I will finish the artwork off camera and then I'll kind of film it, I'll edit it all together in a way that makes sense. So you'll notice sometimes in my videos, I look like this and I hold up a white chicken egg and I'm like, let's make an egg today, right? And then in the second part, I'm like, here I am, I've made this egg today. Well, they're not the same egg, right? <laughs> like all of this work was already done and I held up a different egg, okay? <laughs> so um, think creatively about how to cluster film in a way that makes sense for you in a healthy way that you can maintain. Um, and the other fun thing is, you know, you, you can get in a way that you wanna present yourself and then, uh, you know, film something and then change your shirt and then film something else. Like if you have five ideas, like I want to, I want to show this painting that's finished. I want to show this tiny detail that I'm working on over here. And I want to lip sync to a silly song because I'm also having fun. Um, you know, pick a day where you have three hours that you feel like filming and get all that done. <laughs> Again, that's just, that's what I've learned the hard way. Um, and trying to avoid burnout. Okay, so then we're, we're down to uh, taking advice on how, on how, if you're working on growing your page, there are many um, TikTok creators where their whole account is about giving advice on how to grow your account. That's what they do, is they just tell people how to get popular. And I think one of the best things I did as an artist was I listened to them and I thought about it and I really didn't do it. One of the things that you will hear often is you have to post three times a day. And I, I just disagree with that. I don't know how that started. Um, I, I do think if someone posts three times a day for three weeks, one of those videos is gonna go crazy in a good way. But I don't think it's because they posted three times a day. I think it's because they had that many videos out there and one of them hit the jackpot, right? Um, so 
take advice if you want it. And this is from me too. Listen to me, but only, only really try the things that are going to feel good and organic and genuine for you. Okay. Um, and like, even the way I say, I, I think facial expressions help. If that makes you cringe, don't ever do it. Don't worry about it. You know, see how, see how it goes. Um, just, and I think as artists, we're really pretty good at this, at this point, we're, we're pretty good about knowing what our voice is and isn't and being confident in that. So just keep that mentality as you play around with TikTok. Okay. All right. Then taking advice. Okay. Um, or burnout. Uh, so when I started gaining more followers, I was, I was, and still am doing this Pasanka of the week theme where I post three videos, one piece from start to finish on Fridays. Um, and that was gaining traction and people were enjoying it and I was doing just fine. And I was starting to feel so stressed to get those done every Friday. Um, and I started thinking about like when I can film, when my kids are not, you know, in the house to be running around and what is the next piece of art going to be? And I made a quail egg last week. I really want to work on quail eggs today, but I can't because I just, I just showed that. So I should probably go get an ostrich egg. Um, that kind of burnout mentality just does not work with being an artist. Um, and one of the best things was I, I went on vacation and I said, I can't do it. I can't, I can't, um, get us ready for this vacation and also have the videos ready in advance. Like I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to not have a video this week. And do you know how many complaints I got from my followers about None. Nobody cared. Nobody cared that I didn't post a video that week. Like it was so unimportant to everybody else. Of course, nobody's, nobody's waking up on, on TikTok on a Friday to see what egg I did. If it scrolls on their page, they might watch it, but nobody's setting their calendar like I am. No one has ex expectation on me like I do. So I finally let that go. And so it says Pasanka of the week, but it might be every two weeks. Nobody cares. Nobody's keeping track. <laughs> so um, if you're enjoying it, if you're enjoying making the videos, make them. Um, if you need a break, take a break. Um, the, the burnout is real. Um, and especially if you're following advice of people who are doing like the dances that they can film those every two days, right? Um, you know, we're artists, our process is slow take your time, <laughs> pause, um, and, and try to avoid burnout early. Like if you sense it early, hit the pause button. Okay. So that leads us to the creator fund. Um, if you have, if you're 18 years or old or older, good for us, we're, we're over 18, um, over 18, you have 10,000 followers, which takes some time and 100,000 views in a month, there's a creator fund. Um, and it's basically when TikTok starts paying you for your the views that you are bringing in. Um, and my advice on that is, uh, again, as artists, like we, we have different goals, right? Um, it'd be great if people saw our artwork and then wanted to go to our website and buy our artwork. <laughs> I think that's a much more realistic goal than um, getting rich on the creator fund. So I have some success in the creator fund. I decided this spring that I was going to publicly donate everything that TikTok gives me to um, relief in Ukraine. So I'm now I, I get TikTok money and I send it to Ukraine and I do that all through the app so that people can see it so that it's um, overt. And um, yeah, the creator fund is, is great, but it's not, it's not the goal that we sometimes think it is. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah, probably four people are getting really, really wealthy on the creator fund and good for them. Okay, so considerations for artists specifically with this app. Um, first and foremost, nobody wants to watch a video that feels and sounds like a sales pitch. 
Okay, I've seen a lot of, I'm, I'm gonna put it in quotes, artists, um, holding something up and saying like, this is what I made and I have bills to pay. And this, um, and it's on my website and it's only $17, right? Like that's not interesting. Um, nobody that, you know, it doesn't work in our art fair booths. It's not gonna work online. It's gonna work even less online because we can just scroll through. <laughs> um, now, what does seem to work is process videos. Everybody loves to watch something be made. We do. I, I like it's, it's another one of those human needs, right? To like watch a painting unfold in 60 seconds. Oh, I'm not a painter, but I will watch it, right? Um, and I think there's pros and cons to that. First of all, um, how do you feel being creative and filming at the same time? Uh, for me, it took some time, but eventually, like, I just, I, I put the, the phone there and I kind of forget that it's there and I film a lot. Um, and then I'll edit it down later. And that doesn't seem to be, to bother me. What I hear from other artists though, is that they don't want to share their process, um, because they don't want people to copy it. Uh, and I think that's a valid concern and, and everybody needs to have their own, opinion and philosophy on where they stand with that. There's also a lot of great accounts that are more about teaching um, technique. I think that's great. I think that's valid. And I think that's a wonderful way. If you can encourage someone into your craft and then they learn how hard it is, <laughs> um, they're probably gonna appreciate what you have learned in your years faster. So. I, I did a, a free series of four parts on how to do a very, very simple egg. Um, and a couple people tried it and they, and then, you know, I had only positive things to say about everything that I saw people do. And I was truly honored that I could bring people into this art that I love so much. But I do think it kind of helps the younger generation appreciate the skills that we have <laughs> in our, in our field, right? Um, so I would encourage you to show more of your process than you think maybe you should. Um, because I think you might underestimate how refined your skills are and how wowing that is to someone. And even they're going to see it and they're going to think like, oh, I could do that. And then they're going to try. They're going to say, I can't. <laughs> So do what makes you comfortable, but have conviction in your authority as an artist who's been doing this for years. You, you are miles ahead of, of where they are. Um, and maybe you will encourage them to try harder and good on you. That's great. Maybe you will encourage them to buy your art. Good on you too. Right? Okay. So, um, and again, with your, you know, you have this professional voice. Um, we are all older than, than the um, average TikTok user here. So use your professional voice the way you would want to with a 20 year old. Um, and that, you know, that goes back to commenting on other people's work um, and, and even the way you present your own work. Um, you know, what are you, what are you gonna say about your own work that, people can then internalize for themselves, right? Are you going to critique it and, and point out all the things that you don't like? Or are you going to have a positive energy to it? Um, because there's certainly something that we all gravitate more towards. Okay. And another consideration is going live. Um, and so this brings me to Allison's earlier question. Do I schedule it um, or do I advertise it? And I've done both. I've scheduled going live and I've told people and I've even, you can set a timer for going live. And then I've dreaded it for the weeks leading up. I've, I hated every moment. And then I had to make sure my kids were in bed and they were quiet and my husband wasn't going to be watching me and making fun of me. <laughs> um, I hated it. So now I only do lives spontaneously when I feel like it. 
Um, and usually they don't involve my face at all because I'll do them at eight o'clock at night. I'm probably in pajamas. I'm probably having a glass of wine off camera because you can't show it on TikTok. And it's, it's just the camera pointing down and it's a very slow process. And I'll be darned if people don't hang out and watch me draw on an egg for two hours. It's bizarre. And then they follow me and I still don't understand it. Like it doesn't make any sense. So, um, there are a few artists who will, will do their process live and it is very slow. And I am always captivated by what an audience they have doing this slow process. And I think, again, there's something, there's something there that we need as humans to like slow down occasionally. Um, so play around with that if you want to. You do need 10,000 followers to go live, which is a bummer. And it will take a while. It will take a while to get to that point. Um, P.S. If anybody needs to start with followers, text me and I will, I will follow you <laughs> happily. <laughs> um, so going live has its, its pros and cons. Um, do I narrate or talk during my live videos? Yes. Also, I have a classical music element to my profile. I'm, I'm actually, um, like my, all my degrees are in music education um, and not art. So I, I pair all of my work with a classical composer or a classic piece. Um, and so when I do my lives, I like to have classical music in the background and then I'll, I'll be pretty quiet when I'm talking and I'll just say a couple hellos or um, I get more chatty the more wine I drink. But again, I try to just be authentic with it. Okay, so last two points, well, last one point, and then I'm happy to answer questions. There's some great ones in the chat. So what could go wrong? A couple things. <laughs> um, there, there can be arguments on your page or on other people's pages. And I, uh, if you're trying to grow your page, I would encourage you to not engage in arguments in any way, <laughs> which is hard for me sometimes because I have my opinions. Um, uh, I will say like my one caveat is sometimes um, I'll, I'll see a negative comment on somebody's post. And while I don't argue with the negative comments, I will, I will respond to them in a very positive only defense of the artist or whoever. Um, and I'll just say something positive. I, I thought she, the way she used orange was very optimistic and I liked it very much. Thank you, <laughs> right, whatever. Um, so arguments are not necessarily fun or enjoyable or rewarding. So that can be a problem. Um, occasionally, on your videos, on my videos, I should say, um, I have great intentions and yet somehow I have offended people. It happens. <laughs> um, so that's bad PR. Uh, saying anything offensive will, people will unfollow me, right? Um, so you, I also have to come to terms with the fact that I am not for everybody, right? If I get up to 100,000 followers and I say something that I, I do believe in, and I, it's not incredibly political or polarizing, and people leave, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be okay with that. Um, but yeah, sometimes, sometimes we inadvertently offend people. And I would also say this very young generation is thin-skinned, right? As artists, we have the hide of a rhino, right? All the rejection we get um from juries and just being in the art world like we're good at this we're we're professionals at being told no or that's not really that great um those 18 year olds they're not there yet right they're just they're not um so they get offended easily they'll really let you know when they're offended it is what it is um and then something that i noticed is that they will also I see a lot of accounts that aren't growing because they're spending energy responding to negative feedback. They'll post a video and they'll get 10 positive comments and one comment that says, this is too expensive. 
And that's the one they respond to. And I, I why? We just, just let it go, like, let it go. <laughs> um, so I think that's an easy trap to fall into. Uh, so I don't respond to negative comments. I don't defend my work. I don't defend my prices. I don't spend any energy interacting with someone who says this is not worth it or interesting or pretty, <laughs> right? <laughs> like I just, I just let that go. Um, and I think that can be hard, <laughs> but it can, in the long run, it works out. Okay. That is everything I have to say. And I want to honor our time because it is almost 11. So if people need to leave, I am not offended. If you leave, I appreciate you being here. Um, I'm happy to, you know, continue answering questions. I don't have to leave. Um, but just don't feel offended if you leave the Zoom. I'm, I'm good. I'm good with that. Okay. So thank you. Um, I'm going to. Yeah, there was a, there's a, been a lot of comments and there are a lot of questions, Catherine. Mm -hmm. uh, very informative presentation. Thank you. Because uh, basically I, I just, uh, you know, I was kind of scared of TikTok. Like you said, I think it is a younger crowd and stuff like that, but it sounds like it's a, it's a great way, but it sounds like a lot of video editing and a lot of work goes into what you've done. You, you're you very thoughtful and uh, um, have done an excellent job at um, getting on TikTok and uh, um, making it work for you. So there are some questions on here. Um, Wanda asked, can you upload video from your computer? So like if she shot a video and she has it on her computer, can she uh, then load it to her TikTok page? So that's... That's what I have not been successful doing that. Uploading it from my phone, yes. From a computer, I have not done that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, okay. I'm Is there a, a, so 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 you're just creating the videos on your phone and then you load it onto TikTok and then you're doing your editing on the TikTok platform. Now, are you doing that from your phone or you or can you do that from your laptop? No, you phone. do it all from your phone? Yes. Okay. All yes. Right. Mm. Uh, and then there's another a great question. Do I use the same videos on my Instagram reels? Um, and slightly different. So I will do all the filming. That's like cluster filming idea. I will film all of it. Um, and I'll post three videos to TikTok and I will take I will shorten those even more and I'll turn that into a reels because reels are really only 60 seconds. And I feel like um, parts don't work so well with reels for some reason, that's just my own bias. Um, and also I think reels don't get pushed out by Instagram if, first of all, if they have a TikTok watermark, but if they're identical to something else I've put on TikTok, I think Reels and TikTok are very competitive and they don't want to promote people who are doing double dipping. So I will, I'll basically do the same video, but just slightly different editing, slightly different music, a different voiceover. It takes like, you know, 10% of the time more to make it a little bit unique, but that's what I do. Uh, can I schedule TikTok posts in advance? No, unfortunately, I cannot. I don't know if that's something I just haven't figured out, but I don't think I can. Um, so, but again, I have it all saved in drafts. So once I know I want to send these off at five o'clock on Friday, I just got to click that button. Um, do you can add titles and graphics in the TikTok app or in the video app? Great question. Um, you can add titles and graphics in the TikTok app. And after some clunky playing around and getting it wrong for, you know, a month, it becomes easier to use. That TikTok editing app, really annoying for a month, and then you'll get the hang of it. Um, should I start assigning certain shirts to specific sculptures that each take a month to produce? You could, you totally could, you totally could. Um, the other catch is sometimes, sometimes I think it's detrimental to the value of my art that I make it look like I do it all in one day, right? There's a lot of editing that I do to make it look like it just all happened and it didn't. So sometimes I regret that and maybe I'll change it. 
And sometimes you might want to say like, well, it's, it's a new day, new shirt. Like people say that too, right? Um, and that's where your titles could be useful in your profile. Like you could have a name for your sculpture. It could be like Amadeus part one, Amadeus part two, Amadeus part three. You could do 10 of those if you want to, and you're wearing different clothes, it's different weather, but the titles are what's keeping it consistent. Anything like that. Look at other artists' um, profiles and see what you like and what you don't like. TikTok, uh, is TikTok taking over your creative voice? Yeah, a little bit. I'm selling my soul a little bit. <laughs> also gaining a lot. So. <laughs> um, can you take process shots and then create a video from the stills? Yes. Great question. The answer is yes. However, is the general audience going to find that interesting enough to watch the whole thing? I don't, I'm not optimistic about that, but try it, but try it, try it. I don't know. And then, but I also think like, if you put some good music to it and an interesting voiceover, that's going to help. Okay. Try it. Um, let's see. Can I ask you a question about yeah. music? Can I get, um, so you're saying you have music playing in the background when you're doing like your live uh, um, videos. Is there ever any kind of uh, issue with the music, you know, being copyrighted or, or however that is that, you know, is it that, that legal or is that something that you're not concerned about that it's, um, it's a great question. So first of all, on my lives, I'll just put on, you know, music in my home and I don't worry about copyright with that. Um, with TikTok, you get to upload video that they have. And all I can say is I've not had an issue using any of their provided audio with copyright okay. issues. Oh. I also think I'm so small, like, and all like no. So the answer is no. And am I super concerned about it? No. <laughs> Should I be more concerned? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just um, curious. Does the TikTok have its own? So it has its own music that they they have their whole their whole library. You just try to find something that kind of works along with your yeah. okay. Yes. Now I yes. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, great question, Adam. What is the percentage of sales and monetary return from my time on TikTok? Great question. Um, and so a couple of weeks ago, I did a, a Pisanki quail egg necklace that was a bouquet. And I wanted to make sure that I was posting that video 10 days before Mother's Day. And so I filmed one of them, the process. And then lo and behold, I had eight to sell on my website. And I don't mention selling them in my videos. I, again, nobody wants a sales pitch, but if I show the process and I talk about what I love about it and it's genuine and it's heartfelt, I think people are interested enough to then go and look and see, is it like, is that something you can buy? You can buy it. There's free shipping. You know, like if you have all those things in line, um, it, it does help out. So Again, my story is unique because I really formed my business at the end of 2019. So I don't have great data to show that TikTok has scaled my business. I was very small before this, um, but has it worked? Yes. Am I gonna live off of TikTok money? No, <laughs> I'm not. Um, but it, I think, you know, if I, if I don't put all of my eggs in one basket, if I have TikTok and art fairs and lectures, you know, it's a good balance and it's working out. But um, it's, it's- At the end of your videos, do you, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. At, at the end of your videos, do you mention your website or, or is it just that you've got your website on your TikTok page and people, out of curiosity, then just look at your page and they see your website. Okay. So you don't at the end say, go check this out on my website. Okay. All right. No, nope. thank I don't. you. I thank don't. You. I think people, if they're interested enough, okay. they'll find you. And I think that is more effective. Yeah. Great. Okay. So again, if I've answered your questions and you want to leave, 
thank you for being here, but I'm still happy to scroll through these, do the short videos at each stage, then stitch together in TikTok. Um, so again, so you can't, I could do a five minute video of one egg from start to finish. Um, but I think the kids lose their attention. So there's something about if I do a video where I'm only doing the first part of the process and then it's over and it's a little bit jarring and I leave them hanging, but it's still there for them to watch. It's not like a season finale where it's a cliffhanger and you're angry because it's not there, right? It's just, it's gotta be interesting enough for them to say like, but what next? And then it's there that they can see it. Um, so that's why I like to do my three parts still. And then for yeah, some reason, reason, I'm asking, the reason I'm asking that Catherine is mm -hmm. it could take me weeks to do it. So, you know, do I, such little teeny pieces of each. So I didn't know if you stitched it together because yeah. I couldn't, possibly, you know, and I can't show my kiln time, all that kind of thing. Oh my gosh. So there are so many, so many, and I, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong, like ceramic artists and potters um, on TikTok and they're fascinating and they have great followings. There's a lot of pottery artists, I'm sorry if that's not the correct term, um, that they have collections that sell out immediately from TikTok. It takes them a while to get there, but oh, so find some of them and see what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good, Jeff. According Does to anybody Jeff, else have any questions? Yeah. This has been very informative, Catherine. I Thank appreciate you. you opening my eyes, you know, um, giving me something else to think about. So that's, uh, well, Wanda's actually a glass artist. So she, when she was talking about the kiln, she was talking about her uh, glass that she's firing in the kiln and stuff. But uh, um, I'm in the process of, uh, I'm a photographer, but I'm in the process of doing a, a book. And so I could see, um, you know, I'm just trying to think of, you know, the ways that I could use TikTok to my advantage um, there and stuff. So, so definitely it's a platform that uh, um, I think we could all be looking into and, uh, you know, especially everybody on here, you know, they're creating things with their hands and stuff, or I'm doing it with the camera and stuff. So mine's a little different, but everybody else here, I could actually, I can see everybody you know, filming portions of them working and like Molly doing a live painting and, you know, um, I, I would watch, I would watch it. It'd be fun. So thank you for your time today. Thank you. Anybody have some, any more questions? <laughs> Adam's you. good. I'll see you later if we ever have a question because you're just a wealth of information and just so kind to talk with, so. I certainly have not done everything right. And the way I do it does not mean it is the correct way for anybody else. Um, but I think if you're having fun, that's a good start. I appreciate you. Um, I'm happy to, to say hello at all the art fairs. Please introduce yourself so that I can remember. Um, but yeah, I have I have nothing but great things to say about the artists in Missouri, and I'm it's it's a thrill to be involved with this group. Thank you. And Catherine, Catherine your work is, is there, amazing in uh, person. So have you, you have noticed to any her change? Work. Catherine, have you noticed any change as we've come out of the pandemic? Have you noticed lower following, or you see it just as good as it was a year ago? Uh, it's it's always getting better. With, with that being said, there are still days that I lose followers. Mm. And the first time that happened, I was, I was sad, right? <laughs> but, but there's people who said like, that's enough eggs and that's okay. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> um, so you just, you, you gotta let it, you gotta let it roll, right? So in general, my numbers are always going up. My sales are always improving. Um, if I look at the daily statistics, I'll go crazy. Um, but yeah, it's all, it's been good. I, I have a question for you, Catherine, cause I have chickens. Um, do you buy like a special egg? I mean, uh, so I guess like your eggs have already been blown out and they're cleaned and everything. Um, so where do you get your eggs? That's weird. 
<laughs> so sometimes, sometimes they're just from Schnucks. Um, I am also, I'm enjoying Vital Farms brown eggs um, that you can buy at the grocery store. They're also delicious. And uh, there's another one I found at Schnucks that was blue chicken eggs. Um, so mm -hmm. mostly they're just grocery store eggs. However, you know, I'll do parakeet eggs for necklaces and those come from a breeder in um, California. There's an ostrich farm in Illinois. There's an emu farm in Missouri. So all over. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's neat. So you're blowing out your own eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's great. That's great. Yeah. All right, you ought to look into uh, the Cucamaran eggs. They're a chicken egg, but it's like a deep, 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 dark chocolate. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, and you ought to look into a Cayuga duck eggs um, because they're like almost black. So they're really cool. But the later, the later they go into the laying season, and I could hook you up with a farmer that has Cayugas, you know, okay. so, so if you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool. Hook me up. Great. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, everybody. It's been really Any fun. Any more questions? Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you guys. guys for showing everybody up. have a great day. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. This is so cool.